okay so today we will discuss uh, uh, about the characteristics of computers then uh, computer organization also okay what are the different characteristics of computers characteristics means the the what you say the the specialties of computers so the first one is the speed the computer is very fast very fast in the sense uh, it processes data very fast uh, when you are calculating using your uh, pen and paper method or even using your calculators it will take time but computer processes data very fast that is uh, uh, it does millions of instructions per second that is millions of calculations per second it it can do so uh, like in some calculations it will, will take uh, hours or even some cases it may take uh, days to complete the ca complete calculations but uh, the computer can complete these type of calculations in a few seconds so examples uh, such example computations are like a, a generation of salary slips, uh, slips for employees that is a uh, for an organization like ours in a college or in any another organization in a lar large organization where there are hundreds of employees uh, each month the employees uh, should be supplied with a salary slip that is how much salary they are getting and uh, what are the deductions uh, how much uh, will they get in your bank account etc etc uh, is there any specific deductions because of their uh, leaves or is there any specific deduction because of their savings the tax deductions etc so those sort that sort of computations if uh, a person does or if a multiple persons does uh, using their cal uh, calculator and uh, pen and paper it may take uh, days to complete but uh, the computer software so the computer can process this data very fast and it can be generated in a few seconds another condition is uh, the weather forecasting our supercomputers or uh, high-end computer systems are used to forecast the weather okay we know that uh, most of the time whether the weather forecasting becomes uh, uh, wrong in the sense that is uh, if they say if the weather forecast is uh, it is likely to be rain in most of the time it will be the other way but uh, uh, nowadays nowadays if you look into the weather forecasting conditions most of the time it is right even uh, in your mobiles uh, you might might be seeing that uh, uh, the time of uh, the time of rain that is uh, being forecasted so in almost all the cases uh, not all the cases but uh, in many cases it is true also so the weather forecasting if we does all these forecasting methods uh, by person or it is uh, done by hand calculators or uh, other methods then it will take a lot of time that is uh, it will be very slow also. so that is the characteristics of one of the most important characteristic of computer is uh, the speed it can process the data very fast so that's it then the accuracy so it can give uh, the result uh, the result very accurately uh, very accurately in the sense um, if we you are dividing some uh, specific number with another number where the decimal digits are continuous uh, so it can give the value give the value to the accuracy that is required for us maybe it may be only one digit after the decimal uh, it may be three digits as after the decimal or even it can be five digits as after the decimal it depends it depends on the uh, nature of calculations like in the case of nano sciences etc the number of digits after the dot it is very important so the uh, last digit the, there may be some five or six digits after the decimal so that much accuracy can it can the computer can give uh, only not uh, five, five digits after the decimal it can give any number almost uh, infinite number of uh, characters after the uh, decimal can be given by a computer so the accuracy is uh, another important characteristic then the third one is diligence diligence in the sense it doesn't get uh, tired or fatigued uh, if a human being does a uh, job com continuously, continuously and uh, repeatedly. 
after some time he gets tired and he needs a break and break for a tea break for a just for a walk or break to uh, talk with their friends etc but in the case of computers uh, they never gets uh, tired it is uh, they, they never get fatigued also so it can continuously does the same operation repeatedly hundreds of times thousands of times millions of times again it can perform the long and complex operations uh, complex calculations with the same speed and accuracy from the start uh, till the end but uh, in most of the time the human calculations when the humans does it uh, starting uh, when it starts it is uh, a speedy start then uh, it goes on slowing down and at the end he gets uh, so tired that he cannot do it but it, it is not the case with the computers computer can do the same thing repeatedly or the long complex calculations continuously with the same speed and accuracy so that is uh, the third characteristic that is diligence then the second one is storage capability uh, in your computer or laptop whatever it is there there is a large amount of data stored maybe it may be uh, video files it may be audio files it may be uh, document files or any type of files so a large amount of data is stored in the computer uh, it is the, the amount of data that a computer can store is uh, a large multiple of the amount the amount of data that can be stored by a human brain even though the human brain is always better than computer but uh, the amount of data that can be stored stored by a human brain is limited but the amount of data that can be stored by a computer is uh, huge huge means uh, it may be millions of uh, bytes or millions of bits then uh, gigabytes uh, terabytes even it goes to terabytes nowadays so the large volumes of data and information can be stored and also retrieved whenever required the retrieving of the data is also very fast uh, it is not just a storage of the data it can be retrieved the data is can be retrieved whenever it is required so that is another important characteristic so uh, in the case of computers uh, the storage is done in two ways in uh, two two types of storage devices one is a primary storage device and the second one is a secondary storage device in the primary storage device uh, a small amount of data is stored temporarily for uh, in the primary memory uh, that is um, when we switch on your computer when you switch on a computer some data is stored or when we are processing a specific data it is being stored in the primary memory then the secondary storage devices can store a large amount of data permanently in the primary memory what happens is when you shut down your system the memory or the uh, data that is that was stored in the primary memory gets lost but it is not the case with the secondary storage devices secondary storage devices like your hard disk uh, your um, pen drive or uh, your cd drive or dvd drive etc they are the secondary storage devices they can store the store a large amount of data permanently that doesn't go or the data is not lost when you are uh, switching off your computer so that is uh, the difference between the primary memory as well as the secondary memory or secondary storage devices we will see it uh, more on it later and versatility versatility means uh, it can perform different types of tasks at the same ease uh, in the case of human beings they are uh, mostly they are specialized specialized for some specific tasks but um, a computer it can perform different types of tasks uh, at the same time at the, or at the with the same ease actually uh, at the one moment that is a uh, uh, at this moment you are listening to a lecture from your faculty and uh, after half an hour you will be switching off uh, from this particular meeting and then you may be watching a movie so and uh, one moment you may be typing a letter document and in the next moment you may be playing a music so that sort of uh, uh, 
different operations different operations can be done with the same ease there won't be any uh, specific uh, uh, expertise of a computer to do a specific thing so that is the versatility it can do many things or different types of tasks with the same ease so these are the uh, five different characteristics of uh, computers that is speed accuracy diligence storage capability and versatility now we move on to the computer organization computer organization is uh, nothing but the arrangement of uh, parts or the uh, general arrangement of parts in a computer so mainly in a, the main uh, type of architecture that is uh, mainly used in most of the computers is a von neumann architecture in von neumann architecture actually uh, this is the block diagram this uh, this diagram this diagram represents the block diagram of uh, a von neumann architecture in this case this is the input or output devices the io means io means the input or output device this is from the right to left actually not from left to right you have to read it from the right to left so in the right it is input or output devices so see in in the right side in the right side there is a picture where uh, a computer system is shown so the input devices uh, are the input devices are the printer scanner mouse sorry not printer it is a scanner mouse then keyboard etc then it goes to the memory from input or output devices it goes to memory in most of the cases it doesn't go to the memory or uh, may not be go to, may not go to the directly to the memory but it accesses the memory through the alu or uh, the central processing unit uh, in which there is an alu and uh, cu is there that is a uh, alu is arithmetic and logical unit and cu is the control unit so it has a memory and then this memory can be accessed through uh, accessed uh, by the cpu that is the central processing unit the control circuit is there that is a program counter or uh, a microprocessor may be there then the arithmetic and logic unit is also there so this is uh, the typical von neumann architecture that is the input output unit then the central processing unit and then the memory and then there will be a secondary storage devices these are the main four functional units of a computer the main function four functional units of a computer are the input devices uh, the output devices the cpu the memory and the secondary storage devices so these are the four uh, sorry the memory and the secondary storage devices are taken together the memory as well as secondary storage devices are taken together so uh, there are these are the four the input devices the output devices the cpu the central processing unit and the storage devices these are the four fu main functional units but in some cases uh, or in uh, many cases the uh, central processing unit is divided into two more things that is alu as well as control unit the central processing unit is divided into control unit as well as alu so uh, we can count this the number of functional units as uh, either as four if you are taking the uh, alu and the cu as together as one or it can be considered as uh, six so uh, let's see what are the different uh, logical units in every computer so first is the input unit that is uh, in both the types of classifications that is the both the types of uh, functional units this is the logical unit the six logical units are there and the four functional units are there and uh, uh, the four functional units uh, some of these are overlapping that is uh, some of the units some of the names in the logical units comes in the uh, functional units also like uh, the input uh, devices or input unit so the six out of the six six uh, logical units the first one is uh, the input unit the input unit is all the input devices the input unit in your laptop the input unit is uh, the horizontal horizontally placed part that is uh, which in, includes uh, the keyboard the mouse and even uh, the mic is also an input uh, device so all these input devices constitutes the input unit so 
obtains information from the input devices human beings or the the operators the human operators or even the machine operators or whoever is operating the machine has to give some input to the computer so it can be either a keyboard either a mouse either a scanner either a mic or even uh, another trackball devices are there so there are so many input devices available then uh, the second unit the second important uh, logical unit in a computer organization is the output unit so this also you might be knowing which are the different output devices uh, the output uh, devices or uh, uh, output unit is any device which is used to take output from the or which is uh, used to give output by the computer that is the computer gives output through this particular device that is it can be a screen it can be a monitor that is a screen is uh, normally a monitor uh, a screen is fixed to a monitor so it can be a monitor or it can be a printer where you can get the hard copies of uh, the things that is, you can see in your computer then there is uh, an, in some cases the output unit is used to control other devices also that is uh, the signal from the computer might be going into a robotic hand so that then the robotic hand might be working as an output unit so that is another condition that is the output is input is done from uh, any device that can give signal to that can give signal to the computer it can be even your through the internet uh, the input units uh, the input uh, through the internet when uh, uh, a modem is connected to a computer and you can give input through the modem that that is also possible so the input unit is any device uh, which can give information to the computer so some of the examples are keyboard mouse etc etc then the output unit is any device through which the output uh, is taken or the results of uh, the processing in which happens inside the computer is taken out so it can be a screen it can be a printer or it can be digital uh, signals or binary signals or uh, analog signals which is transferred to other devices another uh, output device is um, the um, uh, speaker where you get the sound as the output so that is another output device so output unit is there so then the third uh, logical unit is the memory unit the memory unit can be uh, different types uh, that is uh, uh, the memory unit is used to for rapid access of data it is uh, normally the memory unit is normally of low capacity because uh, it doesn't include the secondary storage device it includes only the uh, memory that is inside your computer which is used to store uh, the store the data which is being processed right now that is if you are working on a uh, what you say document you are working on a word document you are preparing a word document then that particular word document is actually loaded into this uh, primary memory that is that particular primary memory uh, is the memory unit that is within this particular system so it is for rapid access that is uh, uh, the secondary storage devices are uh, what you say not that much fast it is uh, comparatively slow compared to this primary memory so the primary memory is used to get fast access to the data that uh, you are being uh, on which you are being worked so then it will be of low capacity compared to the uh, the low capacity is compared to the um, what is the secondary storage devices so what happens is when you input some data into this uh, input device what happens is it is first to goes to this uh, memory unit uh, it uh, stores this input information then it goes to the arithmetic and logic unit or the control unit depending on uh, wha what information you have given and what to do with this particular information so then the different components of a memory unit are row that is the read only memory that is, uh, there is a CMOS uh, ROMs are there and EEPROM uh, are there. There are many other types of ROMs are available, read-only memory, where you cannot write anything onto that particular 
memory. Uh, this is uh, relevant, this is uh, required in your system. When you boot the system, when you switch on the system, the computer should know what to do when you switch on the power. So when you switch on the power, there comes a window, there comes a screen in which in most of the computers, in uh, many computers it comes, uh, where the, 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 it shows the information about the system. And uh, all these things, and then it loads the operating system into your RAM, RAM or rapid access uh, memory. So uh, rapid access memory is not RAM, it is a random access memory. Random access memory is RAM. RAM is rapid accessible, rapidly accessible, that is very fast memory. So ROM is read-only memory where you cannot write or uh, nothing is being written at the time of operation. It is written the data which is uh, within or the information that is within the read-only memory or ROM is written in the factory level. That is when the computer is manufactured. When the computer is manufactured, when the system is manufactured, uh, they, the company writes that the information in the ROM and uh, uh, this particular information is used to make your system workable that is uh, uh, operatable also uh, that is it uh, this particular information is used to load the operating system into the ram or it is used to uh, detect this rom uh, the information within the rom is used to detect uh, what are the different peripheral devices? What are the devices that are being connected to your system, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, when it is being initiated, when it is being initiated, not all the devices that is being connected, like a printer, etc., is uh, or mouse, etc., they are being uh, detected only afterwards. But uh, uh, whether a monitor is detect, uh, connected to it, whether it has to display the uh, information about their motherboard or the uh, processor etc that is uh, written in the row then this uh, cmos as well as eprom eeprom etc are uh, the different types of uh, read only memory that is available then there is a random access memory random access memory it, there are again different types of uh, random access memories are available that is sram dram uh, simm that is sim dim etc etc there are so many uh, random access memories are available Random access memories are uh, memory uh, is the memory in which the uh, operating system data is being loaded and is uh, the information for working the computer is loaded when it is being switched on. The switching on of the uh, computer is known as booting. Booting means um, when we switch on the system, the power is coming to the system and uh, it is being powered. Once it is being powered, uh, the information that is uh, written in the ROM, the read-only memory is being executed. And doing, uh, during this uh, execution, the execution of uh, the information inside the read-only memory, that is ROM, what happens is uh, data from the hard disk, that is the secondary storage device, so some data from the secondary storage device is loaded into the random access memory that that is known as booting that is the operating system that is uh, the system software is being loaded into the random access memory the random access memory is uh, very flexible flexible in the sense it can easily uh, we can easily access the data written in it almost all the data that we are being worked uh, on which we are uh, working is being stored in the RAM. And once we say that it is to be saved into uh, the secondary storage device, then only the secondary storage device, like your hard disk, comes up. Otherwise, all the data uh, you are be, uh, working on is being stored in the RAM. You may, might have experienced the uh, conditions in which uh, you were working on some some document and uh, all of a sudden uh, the power goes off 
and uh, then when you restart once uh, the uh, system, uh, the power comes back you restart the system and uh, you see that whatever you were working is lost that is uh, whatever you have in the saved saved is lost it is because of those data the data that uh, you were working was saved in the random access memory the ram and when you are when the power goes off <coughs> when the power goes off whatever is being stored in the random access memory is also lost so when you are reloading it it may not be available there but in order to bypass these things uh, nowadays what happens is a copy of this whatever is in the random access memory is uh, also being stored in the hard disk also so that uh, you can retrieve the data uh, after the after a power failure so that is uh, the memory unit so the memory unit consists of the rom as well as ram then the fourth unit is the arithmetic and the logic unit it is a part of cpu if as i said if you consider four and five as uh, together that is uh, the secondary storage unit as well as memory storage unit as a single part single uh, memory unit and then the arithmetic uh, lo and logic unit and the control unit as a single part single part then there are only four functional units but when we are dividing it into logically there are six units and the uh, one of uh, the part in the cpu is the arithmetic and logic unit the arithmetic and logic unit as the name implies does uh, arithmetic calculations and uh, takes the logic decisions the arithmetic calculations can be addition subtraction multiplication or division etc whatever the arithmetic operations or uh, yeah, are the main arithmetic operations are addition subtraction multiplication and division and all other operations are repetitions or uh, a combinations of the same and the logic decisions is uh, like uh, whether a particular value is greater than or this one greater than as another value or whether it, this is true or false this particular statement a given statement is true or false that is the logical decisions uh, that is uh, the arithmetic log and logic unit the, the working of uh, or the uh, what you say the importance of arithmetic and logic unit is it performs the arithmetic calculations as well as takes the logical decisions then the control unit the control unit is the one which controls every uh, devices or every uh, operations inside a computer that is it supervises and coordinates or all, all other sections of the computer that is it is uh, uh, the unit which controls the input devices how you have to or if you type a specific value how it is to be in uh, stored is uh, controlled by the control unit so uh, for example if in some cases the data that you are being uh, entered may not be directly displayed on your computer so it is because of the control unit control unit uh, uh, believes that or a control unit decides that this particular data is not to be displayed right now it is to be de displays, uh, displayed after all the data is or the complete data is ended so that is uh, one condition uh, that sort of controlling is done by the control unit that is when you say uh, that is this particular document is printed it is to be printed then what uh, the control unit uh, takes is that the data is read the it uh, says the ram to read the data from the uh, hard disk load it in the ram then it says that uh, this particular data is out to be outputted to a computer uh, to a printer it is not just to be displayed uh, to our uh, to your uh, screen so that is a control unit it uh, supervises and coordinates all other sections of the computer then obviously this uh, the last part that is the secondary storage unit and the secondary storage unit actually we have already discussed about it that is a uh, it is the cheaper uh, way of storing uh, data it may not be that much cheap uh, but uh, it is compared to our rom uh, i mean random access memory compared to our random access memory uh, this is uh, cheap 
uh, in most of the computers, uh, the RAM comes uh, as uh, 8 GB or uh, 16 GB or 4 GB, 8 GB. Uh, the most powerful computer may be having some 128 or uh, 256 GB of RAM. But in our personal computers, you know, we mostly be having this uh, uh, 4 GB or 8 GB RAM. That is the random access memory. But the secondary storage unit, that is uh, the hard disk, the secondary storage device unit is the hard disk. So the hard disk uh, uh, may be having a 500 GB or 256 GB or even higher, 1 TB, that is 1000 GB, etc. is there. So it is because of uh, the cheapness. Uh, it is uh, cheap and it is long term. It can store the data for a long term. And it is high capacity also. As I said, uh, when our RAM is only 4 GB or 8 GB, our hard disk will be having some uh, 500 GB or more than that. So it uh, stores the inactive programs also. All the active programs, all the active uh, softwares, uh, all the active softwares are stored inside uh, your secondary, I mean primary storage, that is the RAM, random access memory. But all the uh, inactive uh, programs or inactive softwares are stored inside um, the secondary storage devices. It may be the secondary storage device can be a hard disk, it can be any external, it can be external hard disk also. Uh, so, uh, as an example, now I am working on on, uh, on this uh, PowerPoint. So the PowerPoint, now the PowerPoint is working uh, within the uh, RAM, that is random access memory. But in my system, I have the uh, Microsoft Word also. The Microsoft Word is stored inside the secondary storage unit. That is uh, inside the, uh, what you say, uh, the hard disk. So that is that are the uh, these are the six functional units. I mean, not functional units. The logical units are in every computer. The input unit, output unit, memory unit, then arithmetic and logic unit, control unit, and the secondary storage unit. So in most of the times, the arithmetic and logic unit and the control unit together is known as uh, the CPU.